adding and subtracting radical expressions. When we're looking at adding and subtracting radical expressions, we want to use the same rules that we do when we are looking at adding and subtracting like terms and variables. For example, if we have 3 square root of 2 plus 7 square root of 2 minus 11, we have to look at our like terms, if you will. Square root of 2, square root of 2. Those are like terms. They're like pieces. 11, it doesn't match. So this 11 cannot be combined with these pieces. So 3 root 2 plus 7 root 2, that would give us 10 root 2. Just like if it were 3x plus 7x. In this case, it's root 2. They are common terms. They're like terms. So this will simplify to 10 root 2 minus 11. Say we have 9 plus 4 times the cube root of a minus 7 times the fourth root, excuse me, 4 times the fourth root of a minus 7 times the fourth root of a plus 5. So now we have two sets of like terms, if you will. We have the a under the fourth root, and we have the constant. So we need to simplify both of these. So we have 9 plus 5, that gives us 14. We have 4 minus 7, that gives us negative 3. We can't combine these together because they are not like terms. We have the square root of 75 plus the square root of 108. Right now, it doesn't look like we can do a whole lot. Let's see if we can break this down though. So 75, well a perfect square component of that would be 25 times 3. 108, I'm not going to get a 25 out of that, so let's see what happens when I divide it by 3. If I have 108 divided by 3, that is 36. So 36 and 3. So that would look like the square root of 25 times 3 plus the square root of 36 times 3. Well, the square root of 25 is 5, and we still have the, root th the square root of 3. The square root of 36 is 6, and we still have the square root of 3. But that's okay because now we've made them like terms, if you will. So 5 plus 6 gives us 11, and then we just carry along our square root of 3. So we have 3 times the square root of 45x to the third plus the square root of 5x. Well, 45, we can break that down. That's 9 times 3. The square root of 9 is 3. x to the third, we can break that down. Remember, this is a square root, so it would be 2. If I were to divide 3 by 2, I would get 1 with 1 left over. So that would give us 3 from right here. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x to the third is x with a 3 left over and an x left over inside. Then we have, let's fix that, 9 times 5 is 45. There we go. That'll work out a whole lot better. Plus our square root of 5x from right here. Now we have some common pieces. We have a 5x here. We have a 5x here. They're both under the square root. So let's see if there's anything that we can do. Well, I can't add directly. Here I have 9x, and I have 5x under the square root, and I have 5x under the square root. This is technically 1, but I can't just add it directly. However, I can factor out what's in common, which in this case is a 5x, and write what's left over, which in this case is x plus 1. Now, it's simplified. Let's try one more. There we go. And let's see if we can clean this all up. Our goal is to find perfect squares that are factors of each number. So 54. That is 9 times 6. 24, that is 4 times 6. 96, that is 16 times 6. 
So now we can write this as 5 times the square root of 9 times 6, minus 2 times the square root of 4 times 6, minus 2 times the square root of 16 times 6. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 16 is 4. 3 times 5 gives us 15, square root of 6, minus 2 times 2 is 4, square root of 6, minus 4 times 2 is 8, square root of 6. And now we can simplify it down. 15 minus 4 minus 8, that gives us 3, times the square root of 6.